All right, friends, so if you're going offshore fishing, you gotta know the most versatile fishing rig out there. The best bait, or at least the most known bait, and of course that is called what, Professor? The Sea Witch. The Sea Witch, and in this video, we're gonna talk about why this bait matters to you and exactly how you can make it yourself. All right, Professor, uh, the Sea Witch, I, you know, when I first started going offshore, people talked about this bait all the time, and I noticed quickly that it seemed to be pretty prolific. Yeah. Why is it so prolific in the offshore world? Just like you said it in the intro, it was the most versatile bait that we use. Um, you can catch anything from a two pound mahi on it to a 700 pound blue marlin. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I mean, all the creatures that swim out there in the deep blue will eat this bait. All right, so this is the ultimate if you just want uh, a, a potential mix yeah. of, of catch. Okay, great. Now, in terms of the, the materials we need to, to make this ourselves, what are we looking at here? Well, uh, there's a bunch of different components that you're gonna need. Uh, the main ingredient is nylon hair. You get this at any offshore tackle shop. It'll come in bundles like this. A lot of times, um, the ends, it'll just be a bundle of hair and the ends will not be burnt. And it's very important you need to burn this end because once you cut it loose out of this plastic wrapper, uh, she gonna go buck wild. It goes crazy. Yes. So here you're all tethered together. You can pinch off as much as you want, cut it and make your bait. All right, so step one, nylon hair, yep. and make sure you melt the end yeah. so we don't have any issues. Uh, you're gonna need some nylon rigging floss. And we're gonna show you why we use this here in a minute. That's a funny name, by the way, rigging floss. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> looks right. just like dental floss, but it's heavier duty and uh, it's wax coated. So. Okay, all right. So all right. we'll see the purpose for that. Yep. And we're also gonna need some Sea Witch lead heads. We also can throw some squid skirts, bulb squids is what I call them, but uh, there's so, two, two different ways you can make them and we can incorporate that in one way. Okay. So there's two different ways that we can make a sea witch. Yep. One of which includes this uh, bulb squid, yep. is what you called it, yep. because it's somewhat shaped like a light bulb. That's right. All right. And then the other one is a what again? Uh, that's just a sea witch lead head. It's just a sea witch lead head. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. And its primary purpose is to add a little bit of weight. That's and right. And it has a little notch in it um, that hold your your rigging floss around your hair so uh it gives it it's got a little notch in it there that your your rigging floss will set down into so you can tinch, cinch the hair really tight right you know what i mean but we'll show you all that here in just one second okay all right, all right. good all right so now we're ready to to make us a bait what are the steps here captain all right so the first thing that we'll need to do is get a piece of rigging floss and lay it out on the table. So I normally just pull off about 24 inches. A good pair of scissors is very important. This is not anything special, these scissors, but you just gotta go through a bunch of pairs and see what cuts this nylon hair good. Okay. I mean, you, like I've tried Cutco scissors and everything else, and I just found this random pair of scissors in our <laughs> house, work. and they work better, better than anything. I mean, better than a $40 pair of scissors, and I think they're about a $5 pair. So about 24 inches here. Okay, we got two feet. Yeah, and then we got to decide whether we're gonna make a skirted sea witch or if we're just gonna make a regular one, but we're gonna go ahead and make a skirted first. All right. All right, so you need to take this lid head and it's gotta be placed up inside the bulb head of that squid. So the best way to do that, just like any knot or anything, lubricate it. And um, just stick it up in there and work it on up in there, squeeze it on up in there. So now you have uh, your weight inside of there. Okay. All right, so we'll set that aside here and we gotta decide what color we're gonna use. So I have a lot of luck with big eyes on this color. Big well, eye tuna. Yep, squid skirt and all white hair. So this is actually called crystal hair. It has a little bit more shine to it and uh, 
won't stain mm -hmm. and stuff like normal white hair. So we're gonna, whatever your desired amount is, we're gonna cut that off. This stuff's pretty tough, so you can see why you gotta have a good pair of scissors. Right, right, okay. All right, so now we're gonna lay that right there over top of our rigging floss with about seven eighths of the length out on the other side okay. and about an eighth of the length towards me. Three quarters, quarter, yep. doesn't matter. Yep. This is all just rough. Now we're gonna take our bulb squid and lay right there on top of our hair. And remember the little notches I was telling you about in that weight. Okay, you now we're gonna use them. And now we're gonna use them. We're gonna lay that little notch right there where our rigging floss is underneath of our hair. So now we'll take our two tag ends and just tie an overhand knot. And make sure that that floss falls right in that little divot mm -hmm. on that piece of lead there. But now's your opportunity to get your hair pretty even all the way around it. So before we tighten up the floss multiple times, yeah. we have equal distribution that's right. and of that's, this nylon hair. This is the, that's the toughest part of building this whole thing and keeping that floss in that little notch. Got it. Now the, the, the bulb squid throws a whole nother element into this thing because you can't see it, all you can do is feel it. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna cinch down on that first one and that's all I'm gonna do. You have it laid like this, the overhand knot's on top. We're just gonna pick it up, flip it right over. Another overhand knot right on the other side of the bait. This one we're gonna cinch down pretty tight, but then we're gonna pick it up and look and see how our hair is distributed. It's still a little bit uneven, but Here's our second opportunity to go ahead and move it around a little bit. And a lot of times you can, you can gain that by just squeezing it mm, really okay. hard and it'll push it around and get it kind of even. All right, so now we're gonna take our two tag ends and really pull down on it. Yeah, and it looks pretty even, perfect circle at the top here. Yep. So, okay, all right. Yeah, so Starting what we're gonna do together. is just keep on flipping it. Overhand knots on each side. Pick it up, flip it again. Overhand knot here. So how many times do you think we make a knot with this? Well, it all depends. Um, these sea witches that I've been making in the past have been holding up pretty good. But I would say you probably need to flip this over uh, maybe five or six times uh -huh. and tie a knot on each side. And there's a specific way we need to finish this. Okay. And I'm gonna show you here in a second. All right, so now we're on our last overhand knot. Now on this side, we've already tied one. We're gonna tie one more on this side. Okay, just do it yep. essentially twice. But now we're gonna flip it and make sure your hair is not up in on top of where you're gonna tie your knots. This time we're gonna tie three of them. three times. All right. And you can see here, all that floss just lay right in that groove right. on that weight. So now we're gonna take a fancy pair of scissors, trim all of our extra floss off. Hold this bucket for me here, Marcus. Now, we're gonna take and trim our excess off. Now, I've got fairly large hands, but the way I normally judge it is I'll put the head of that squid right there where my pinky is. And I trim right here. You might not need to trim that. Some, everybody likes their hair differently, but I like mine that long right there. So about the size of a good a size hand. Good size fist, yep. And you'll trim all that so it's nice and even. But now we're gonna take, and we're gonna trim this backside. And we gotta be careful that you don't get any of those there's tentacles mm, yeah, of that bowl squid yeah. in there. So we're just gonna trim this. And there we go. One sea witch. So now we're gonna use this in conjunction with the ballyhoo. Yeah. So these bulb squid, they come with a little point right there. Right. All you gotta do is trim that off, you can get your line right through there. So we'll run our our uh, fluorocarbon lever, leader through that hole and it'll be a chin weight you know, with a pin rig and a hook um, on it and then we'll, we'll rig a ballyhoo on that pin rig 
and uh, you'll have yourself a skirted bait. What it looks like swimming in the water, I have no idea, but it works. <laughs> I mean, but I don't know what to replicate that swims in the ocean. Right. Maybe a squid, I don't know. But I know a lot of times when we get a mark, we'll go back here and jig the lines. And the, the water is pushing back on that hair, so it lays around the ballyhoo. But I can imagine when yeah. you're jigging on that line yeah. and it's fluctuating, that hair is doing that. Yeah. And maybe it looks like a squid. Right. You know. Right. But it works. We've caught a lot of fish on it. Yeah, we, we sure have. Can you can you run these naked without a ballyhoo? Uh, no. So no, you cannot. you're going to run it with the ballyhoo, but no. this is essential. You, you, you can run the ballyhoo by itself, yes. but running it with a sea witch yeah. seems to be the most prominent way. Is that accurate? Um, naked ballyhoos also work great, but see, this kind of takes away from any rigging imperfections that you might have. Okay. on the front of the ballyhoo. When you rig a naked ballyhoo, it really has to be precise in order to swim correctly. And um, this kind of takes away all the error in that. And if we don't use the lead head, is there any difference in the way this is done? You said earlier, you have, do you always use the lead head or? Well, we have to always use the lead head, but right. the squid skirt is an option. Okay, so yep. the squid skirt's an option. Yep. So can we do one with the lead head? We can, and I'm gonna show you my favorite color combination. All right, so we have a orange lead head. Okay. We're gonna get another about 20, 24 inches of rigging floss. We'll lay that there. Favorite color in the whole world. Catches any and everything from sailfish to dolphin to wahoos, tunas, everything under the sun. Now, this two color, see that one we just did was one color. All right, so there's a double combination we got coming. Yeah, blue and black. And you're gonna have to play around for a while with figuring out how much hair to pull off of here. It took me a long time to get a feel for how much hair you need. But, I mean, I would say it's not as big as a, a number two pencil, yeah. you know, loose. Yeah. You know. So the same thing, three quarters, quarter, seven eighths, eighths. You know, we're gonna lay them two colors right there side by side. Yep. In a line, so they touch. We'll take this lead head, place it right there where the groove is, over top of our rigging floss. We'll take our two tag ends, our first overhand knot. See, it's a lot easier now because you see you how that line gets pulled right on around it, but it still twists a little bit. So now there's our opportunity to move it around a little bit. Still crooked, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna. We're gonna tie one more knot loosely because it doesn't want to stay without the bow squid on there. Now we're gonna really, really fine tune it, get that hair around it evenly. And like I say, a lot of times that can just be done with firm presses all the way around it. It kind of moves it around by itself so you feel like it's pretty even. And as you tighten it up, it'll kind of correct itself, but you need to get, give it a good start. So now we're gonna really pull down on it and we're just gonna do the flip thing with overhand knots, just like we did. Now you can buy these at the store, but you know, since I met you, one of the things I've just learned is you get a ton of satisfaction out of oh, man. just making your own. There's nothing more rewarding to me anyway than building something with your own two hands and fooling a fish to bite it. <laughs> I mean, that just, it, it's, that's what thats what does it for me. I, I don't care about cranking them or yeah. anything like that. I just like fooling that fish. Yeah. You know, because the, the, you're putting this in their environment. Yep. And you're trying to mimic a natural bait that they would eat. And to, the fact to think that you could take your two hands and make something to fool them. I mean, you've seen the eyes on these tunas. You know, they, they, they have amazing eyesight. So that's what does it for me. But you go to buy it at one of these at a tackle store, I think it might cost you like eight, bo eight bucks or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, you can spend $100 on buying all the stuff initially yep. to build them. And you can build, you I'm know, sure. 100 yeah, just with that. Dramatically more. Yeah. <clears throat> takes a little bit of time but to your point 
with that comes more satisfaction. That's right. Probably more diversity of, of gear too, just because you can do it real time. Yeah. You find sometimes that they're just biting on a particular color of the, I, of the hair more than others. I do. And uh, it depends on the conditions of the day, the sea conditions, the uh, sky conditions. Yeah. You know what I mean? But this is my all time favorite color right here for every condition. Okay. So now we're getting ready to finish two overhand knots on one side. We're flipping it, three overhand knots on this side. And after a while using this rigging floss, you kind of get a little bit of wax build up on your hands mm -hmm. and the hair starts to stick to it, which is kind of aggravating. But you just got to keep on wiping your hands off and rinsing them off and washing them while you're building this. And this is something that you can very easily sit down in front of your TV at your coffee table. Right, knock out. Yeah. Why you watch them or something yeah. like that? Because you're going to need them the way the sharks are. Can't tell you how many <laughs> of these we went through this summer. All right, and that's so again, the worst if you know you spend eight dollars and a shark come gets it versus spending a couple, uh, yeah, you know, a dollar or two. Yeah. But it almost still sucks even worse because I'd rather give my green money than my hard earned <laughs> work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, dang sharks! I know. Man. See, it's a lot easier now. We don't have that ball squid on there. Oh, oh yeah, it comes off real quick. Comes right off. You don't have to be so careful. And a lot of people leave that a little long. I like mine short. I just don't like, it looks sloppy. And there we go. That's my favorite one right there. Sea Witch without the, bulb the squid. squid ball, the mm -hmm. bulb squid and, and with. So these are the two most versatile. Yep. If you want to catch anything, here's how you do it. And hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, you learned a little bit from it. I know I learned some from it. It's pretty cool seeing this in action and I can imagine the satisfaction that comes with it. And oh, it is, yeah. And I mean, if you guys have to play around with it and make it. The first couple of attempts that you, you'll try, you're like, yeah. I can't do this. But it's just, you have to have the patience, sit down and once you figure it out and get the feel for it, you'll be able to spit them out quick. Yeah, pretty, pretty darn satisfying too, I'm yeah. sure. So hopefully you enjoyed this and you know, if you come fishing with us sometime, you uh, they will see this color right there. You'll see it. <laughs> you'll see it. Maybe we can make one together on the boat. But uh, make sure you like and subscribe and tell your friends about the channel. It's grown really, really fast because we're trying to educate you and we're educating ourselves as we go. And you're you're with us on that journey. And so we hope you like. We hope you subscribe. And uh, until the next time, everyone, stay salty.